Hey everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. This is a year of Christmas series. This is video number five and today we're creating some snowman shaker tags. As always with my year of Christmas projects, I try to inspire you to use maybe product that you already have or uh, talk about ways you can incorporate similar products from your stash to create your Christmas projects. We're starting early, uh, doing a project pretty much every month. I know I am very much off, but look for that to change. It is um, starting to be that time of year where new Christmas product is dropping, and so there is going to be um, a lot more holiday projects coming your way soon. So I am starting my project today with these darling snowmen from the Simon Says Stamped Stamp Gift of Christmas stamp set. And I will tell you that I pulled this image because it fits my tag. We are using the Mama Elephant 2 scallop frames. Something else I'm really working on with this year of Christmas series, um, this is my first year doing this series. I usually do Handmade Holiday near the end of the year and I will do that again. Um, but with my year long series is I'm really trying to mix and match amongst companies. It may not all be Lawn Fawn, it might not all be Mama Elephant or Waffle Flower or whatever the case may be. I'm trying to mix and match with things I have. So I picked, I knew I wanted to do a shaker tag, and I picked the two scallop frames set from Mama Elephant, and then I looked for a snowman to fill, or an image. It didn't have to be a snowman but I tend to gravitate. I like to do some sort of snowman type of tag every year. And so I looked through my stash and I totally love this. Now there is another stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. I do believe it was like the De November or December, maybe January card kit here this last year. I cannot remember. It's a six by eight stamp set and it has snowmen in it too. They're a little bit different style. I would call this more of the traditional style snowman. And so what I did was I went ahead and die cut this guy. Now, I do wanna tell you there are coordinating dies for this. I don't actually have them. When I pulled the stamp set out and I was so excited, I realized I didn't have the coordinating um, dies. So you know what I did? I pulled out my handy dandy brother scan and cut and I stamped all six of my snowmen because we are making six snowmen tags, snowman tags, and I die cut them with my brother scan and cut. I just had to kind of box in that area along the bottom so that it would scan and cut it correctly, which wasn't a big deal. That's going to be hidden anyway, so I didn't worry much about that. I picked some different kind of colors also to color with this time. Um, yes, it's traditional greens and reds, but I picked kind of a blue-green color, so I would call it more a muted green, which is going to match the iced spruce of our tags. I did um, kind of pull in some warm grays and some nice blue-greens for the snow, things like that. All of the Copic markers I'm using are listed down in the description. I am going to color all of my snowmen just like this, I'm going to add white detail to the scarf. I am going to add a black jelly roll pen for the eyes, and I will be right back. So I am coloring all of these. I did color the rest of these off camera. Oops, and I noticed before I'm right back, I forgot to color the snow down here along the bottom. Um, and then we'll color the rest and work on everything else. Something that I think helps so much when you are mass producing, cut everything, have stacks of it all lined up because I promise that it's going to make assembly a snap. It does take a little bit more work initially, but at this point I already had all of the pieces for my tags die cut, so I was able to create the bases, which is important because I am gonna do a bit of stenciling and I need a little dry time for some grit paste. And then I will go color all of my snowmen. But I have the tag toppers, I have acetate, I have the backer, and 
I have the frame and I used three dies from that two scallop frames set. The other two dies from that collection create like a snowy or grassy border, which I don't need for my tags today. Using the Tim Holtz Iced Spruce Distress Oxide ink, I'm going to ink up the background panel. So this is like the inside of the shaker, which will also be the back of the shaker tag. And I'm going to ink up part of the frame. You might notice I'm not taking the ink all the way down to the bottom of either piece, leaving it white. I want it slowly to transition to white so it looks like the snowman is standing in the snow. I am gonna do this for all of the frames and all of the backers. I do have a separate set of brushes that I use for Distress Oxide ink. That way I always have brushes that I can use. I don't have to worry that I've washed them out when I am through. I'm using a pretty light hand to kind of get the effect and the look I want. I am gonna leave the tag topper white. Now, when I'm completely through inking my frames and the backers, I am going to take the background and I am going to stencil with the Lawn Fawn Snowy Sky Stencil and some grit paste. I put the equivalent of what I'm using in the description, which would be like a translucent. Um, you could also maybe pick a glitter paste or something to that effect if you wanted to. However, I did use the Tim Holtz Snowfall Grit Paste. This was part of his holiday set from 2021. I know it's sold out, I, I can't say everywhere. So if you have it, if you purchased, purchased it last year or you're still able to find it, yay. Um, I don't know if he's coming out with these again this year, but you could use regular grit paste. You could use translucent grit paste. You could use glitter paste from, um, any of the companies, Lawn Fawn, Hero Arts, whatever, uh, Nuvo, you could use any of those, whatever you wanna do here. I'm really just wanting a little bit of texture in the background of my scene. It's very soft and very subtle, and I do wanna mention that I completely went out on a limb with these tags. I didn't want to, to ink blend blue. Normally, when I'm creating a snowy sky, I go with a blue background, and I wasn't feeling it. I wanted to do something different, something new, and just something that would give a little bit more of the Christmas vibe that I'm going for. I talk about this all the time in Handmade Holiday as well as my Year at Christmas series. Make your project your own. Make your tags. Let's say you do, um, let's say your wrapping is pinks and reds. Make pink and red tags to match. Maybe it is blue and blues or purples make your tags match. I am very, very much a red kind of girl, um, red and white. So I actually made these tags for my daughter. She wanted tags last year and I did not get them made for her, but she likes to do like greens for her wrapping and I think these will match perfectly. So don't tell her, but they are coming her way. <laughs> um, so I'm making her kind of some tags as I'm working through my year of Christmas series and probably Handmade Holiday as well because she absolutely loves having my gift tags for her packages. After I have stenciled the snowy background and you can see it's only taking a portion of the stencil. I, I did get smarter. I grabbed my waffle flower stencil mat to ink blend and stencil on. I should have got it out to begin with. It keeps less mess. I am just going to stencil up all the backgrounds. Now it does go on white, but remember this is pretty translucent, I think. This is called Snowfall. So I think the translucent regular grit paste would be kind of similar and it's gonna dry fairly clear, but it's gonna have that great raised texture, which is totally what I'm looking for. We will be adding more snow details here in just a little bit. When you are done, stenciling, please make sure you clean your tools right away. I am going to pause my video. I'm going to immediately run to the sink with some warm, hot water and clean my palette knife 
my stencil and my stencil mat immediately because I can tell you that it just dries so fast, which is great for crafting, but it's not great if you want to use any of these tools again because <laughs> it is going to be like cement on there and it does not want to come off. Now I did already die cut all of my acetate solid pieces for this tag set. And the reason at the beginning of the video I talked so much about finding an image that fit this tag set, I think this is a fantastic base tag, like tag size, um, for almost any size of tag. So you could really go through your stash and find all kinds of images. Maybe you've got cute nutcrackers, or you want to create a die cut scene instead of a stamped and colored scene, or maybe you want to put a nice bold like joy, the word joy inside of there with whatever, like have it at a, you know, landscape instead, have it hang landscape, whatever the case may be. You guys, the sky is the limit, but you could do so many things with this. Um, I think a die cut gnome, like the pocket size gnome from Simon Says Stamp would be cute in here. There are so many different ways to do this. I just really think this particular tag shaker tag is fantastic and a very common size if that makes sense sometimes they're small and teeny tiny and that's great um, sometimes they're really big and that's great but this to me is just the perfect standard size so now all I'm doing is taking cotton white stays on ink if you have seen some of my videos before where I stamp on acetate you guys already know Cotton White Stays On Ink is my absolute favorite. I have black and white ink, and I would say 99% of the time, I use white. There is something about white on acetate that I love. I am taking snowflakes and a gift for you sentiment from the Gift of Christmas stamp set and stamping them right on the acetate. I am using my frame and snowman as a guide so I can really see where everything is falling. Even though this is a gift tag, I love to really make them special. Um, gift tags are probably one of my top three things to make. Hands down, when it comes to gift tags, shakers, any kind of gift tag, felt, whatever it might be, top three favorite projects of all time. I love making tags. Always have, probably always will. And I take a lot of pride in making it something that the recipient can use once the gift has been given. You can hang it on your tree. You could use it on a stocking as a stocking deck, a little tag or something. You could re-gift it, reuse it, whatever the case may be. So I think that these layered snowflakes on the acetate with the gift for you sentiment is really going to add to our snowman. You can see that I made sure and avoided his face. The a gift for you is in the bottom third of the panel. I have three snowflakes in the upper third of the panel. And then I really felt along this right side, I am going to need some addition. Well, I was going to say some additional snowflakes, but let's go with and additional snowflake. And for that, I am going to flip my panel around after I clean up these stamps, and I'm going to stamp that. If I had thought of that ahead of time, I probably could have rearranged maybe my stamps differently, perhaps, uh, so that I could have stamped all of them at once, but it didn't work here, and that's okay. So very, very much assembly line style. There is the first layer, I would say, for our acetate window. And that I'm going to flip it upside down, position the remaining snowflake, and we are going to stamp this snowflake on each of the backgrounds or the, each of the acetate windows. Time-wise for this project, I would say from start to finish, it took two and a half hours to make six tags. I probably could have made even more. Um, it went together really, really fast. Maybe, t yeah, I would say two and a half hours, even with die cutting. I will say, 
not coming up with the project though. I already had it. I had all the product pulled. I knew exactly what I was going to do. So I literally just methodically die cut all the components, stamped all my snowmen, die cut the snowmen, and then started the assembly process. So if you were trying to come up with the, the project as well, that will take a bit more work. Now, if you guys know me, you know I like to layer some tags together. I have to use the do not open until December 25th from the gift of Christmas. And I decided not to use just this one. I kind of mixed it up. So from the Mama Elephant B2B rectangles, and they also have circles and squares, but the rectangle has a rectangle tag, the circle has a circle tag, and the square set has a square tag. I love that little mini tag from each of these sets. Not only are you getting fantastic basic circles, rectangles, and squares, you're getting a little tag. So this is the rectangle tag from the B2B rectangles. I've die cut it three times from Smooth White cardstock, and I am stamping December 20th, 25th with Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink, and do not open until with Festive Berries Distress Oxide ink right above that. I was really in a Distress Oxide kind of mood. And I love this. We're gonna layer this with some of the tags. Now I could have done this for all of them, um, but I wanted to see what else we could do. And I really wanted to use the little circle tag from the B2B um, circles. So you're gonna see that here in a bit. I can't remember if I stamp that right now or if I wait a minute, but, oh no, I'm gonna stamp it right now. So also from the Gift of Christmas stamp set is this cute little circle that says December 25th. So I am going to stamp my remaining three little extras with Festive Berries inks on the leftover cardstock I have here. And then I am going to die cut it with that awesome little circle tag from B2B Circle. So none of these things necessarily were made to go together. And that's probably one of the things I like most about this project. And I, one of the things that I hope inspires you to maybe look at your craft stash and see if you can mix and match some products that you already own to create truly unique tags, especially this early in the year well, I know I say that, but we're going to quickly be on the Christmas season, I know, but it is summer. And so while we still have lots of months left till Christmas, you have more time to really, you know, shop your stash. One of my favorite kind of things to say is shop your stash, which is what I did for these tags and see what you can throw together to make some truly beautiful gift tags or cards. On the back of my backing or my backer, my scene backer for the tag, I have flipped it over. It has the iced spruce on the other side and this to and from, I looked through my stamp sets and I actually just grabbed the winter flower. It was right next to a gift from Christmas in my storage bins, but it has a great to and from in it and it's a nice big size. I have a lot of to from that's kind of small. So I used the to from from this stamp set and I am stamping that with Rustic Wilderness on the back of each of these tags because these are gift tags and it finishes them off beautifully. Sometimes I try to tell myself I don't have to do this step, but I'm always, always glad I did because I think it just makes them so beautiful and professional. Okay, you guys, it is time to put it all together. I am going to put one together um, a little bit slower and then I'm going to speed through the rest of the process as it's going to be the same thing for each tag. I'm gonna flip the frame over and I am going to take some thin double-sided adhesive. This is some red tape from Simon Says Stamp and I am going to place it all the way around the perimeter of my scallop frame. It's super strong adhesive. When I'm creating a shaker especially, um, there are several kinds of projects that I'm like this, but shakers are one of them. I wanna make sure my adhesive is going to stick and it is not gonna go anywhere. So this is so sticky. In fact, it was kind of a pill to work with. I don't use it super often, but it works great. I would also suggest a stylus, or if you have a tool in one like I'm using here, the tip of your scissors, something sharp, a piercing tool 
to peel off the backing paper from your tape. Um, it helps keep your fingers out of it pretty much and also helps you pull that backing off. Then I am going to place my acetate right to the back of this. And I'm going to put some of that same adhesive on the tag topper. What I think is genius about this Mama Elephant die set is you could use this on a card, and I have, um, as is without the tag topper, and it's just a super cute frame. It can be a shaker frame, a regular frame, but if you add that little tag topper here, it makes it a tag instantly, which I think is so, so super fun. And then I am going to place that right at the top. You can see it matches up with the scallop. And then I noticed I completely forgot to add my snowman. So I'm gonna just grab one of my extra frames and figure out where I want this guy to go. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna glue him down and then I am going to flip my frame over again and we are going to use some waffle flower foam adhesive. This is the lower profile that I'm using but you can use the taller or lower profile, whatever you like. Or you can die cut that frame multiple times and stack them one on top of another, whatever is your preferred method. And I'm going to frame up the frame of my shaker tag, making sure that there isn't an opening, making sure that the foam adhesive butts up right next to each other to create a seal or a great little well for the shaker material. Then I have some Trinity stamps, little clay snowflakes. I believe it's called Vanilla Sugar. I love these snowflakes. Like, I have so many packages of them because I never want to run out. Um, snowflakes and hearts, you guys. And can you believe it? I didn't even add a heart to this project. I, I can't believe it, but I didn't. Um, I'm going to fill it with a scattering of these snowflakes. It is a pretty low-profile shaker, so I'm not going to overfill it. And... I'm going to pop the backer right in place. And then I noticed one of my snowflakes was standing up on end. So as I'm at a camera here, just know that I inserted the tip of my stylus into my shaker to fix my snowflake. And there we go. How cute is that? Let's thread them together with a little lawn trimmings twine, my absolute favorite. I'm gonna use the green uh, sparkle twine here from Lawn Fawn because these are green style projects or tags I guess I should say. A little more of that rustic-y type of green. Tie that into a little knot and it has the little mini tag as well as the shaker tag. I love it you guys. I love snowmen so I thought this turned out so cute. I'm going to go ahead and continue to assemble the rest of these. And yes, I made it super speedy fast, but I wanted to really show how quickly you can do this. In real time, I looked at the time before I sped this up. It was 19 minutes to assemble the five. No, that's not true. To assemble all six of the tags. I split the clip. <laughs> uh, but so I thought that was pretty good. 20 minutes to assemble them. Once you have all the different components in place and the inking and the stenciling and dry time and the coloring, it doesn't take hardly any time at all to assemble. So even if you would work on certain parts of it for several evenings or over several weeks, you could do a whole bunch of these tags. There's a cute Santa in the Gift for Christmas set. There's like a, oh, what is it? Kind of a, a vase maybe? I don't, it's not really a vase vase. Well, maybe a vase. It has like candy canes and greenery and stuff. I think that would be cute in this tag. Any of your favorite mama elephant lawn fawn critters, like I said, the pocket gnome or one of the gnomes from Simon Says Stamp inside of here. You could do a die cut scene instead. There is literally so many different things you can do to create shaker tags. And here is a look at all six of them finished. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's inspired you to maybe try your hand at making or mass producing some shaker tags for the holidays. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the fifth 
video in the Year of Christmas series here on my YouTube channel. The supplies I use to create my tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring the Year of Christmas series that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.